In this episode, I want to do something a little bit different because it is episode 418 and as you can see, I have a teapot here and the teapot is the HTTP response code of 418. So in this episode, we're going to look at the different HTTP response codes and what some of them are, why you want to use some and why you don't want everything to just be a response of OK or a HTTP response of 200. And the response codes are broken out to five different groups. You have group 100 series, which is informational responses. You have 200, which is successful. 300, which is a type of redirect. Then you have 400, which is a client error. And 500, which is a server error. And for the 100 series, there's really two different response codes that we need to worry about. There's 100, and this is one that we don't even really need to care about. It's just more informational. So it means that the server has received the headers and the request, and it's going to then continue on with the rest of the transaction. Then you have 101, which is switching protocols. So if you are using Action Cable or any kind of WebSockets, and you're sending it over to an endpoint, and it needs to upgrade from a HTTP connection to a WebSocket, then it has that switching protocol response code. So the client knows to switch over to a WebSocket response or something similar. And then we get over to the interesting ones, which is the 200 series. So if you've worked on any kind of front end and back end, then you'll notice that all your response codes are 200. And within that response code, or within the body of the response, you'll have the actual error code if there was any. And I don't think it should be like that, and it really shouldn't have to. But because the front end is separate from the back end, it needs to know that yes, it did receive the response, but then here's the details about that response. When you have a monolith, it's a lot different because you can have your back end and the front end communicate together and mesh well a lot better than having that separate front end from the back end. And then we have a 201 for created. So if you're creating any kind of record, then that would respond with a 201. And then you have 204, which is a bit interesting. It's a no content. It means that the server has successfully accepted the request, it's processed it, but it doesn't have anything to say back to that request. And for the 300 series, it also gets more interesting because with the release of Hotwire and more specifically Turbo, we got a lot of different kind of interactions that were really great for developing Rails applications, really negating the need for a separate front end framework. However, there was a little gotcha if you were upgrading existing applications to Hotwire and Turbo, then you may have noticed that some of the form requests you had before weren't working anymore. Rather, it would work and it would process correctly, but the front end did not respond as you would expect. So in those cases, that's where you would get some kind of error in your dev tools. If you looked at the console, it would say something similar like the form must redirect or something like that. And so that's where a lot of these response codes in the 300 series can really come into play. So anytime you do a redirect, it's going to be a 300 series response code. But there's also a C other, which means that on a turbo request, it's going to break out of that turbo request and then it's going to make it an HTTP request as you would normally expect if you weren't using turbo. And then we get to the client errors. And this is a much more abundant list. So I do have my iPad here just so I don't miss any of them. So we have a 401, 402, 403, 404, and so forth. So the 401 is unauthorized. So if someone is making some kind of request that they shouldn't, then you can respond with a 401 unauthorized as the browser would expect. And then you have payment required, which is 402. And this is one that I probably should be using in situations where you navigate to a page, but there is a payment required, but I really don't use this one that much. In a Rails application, I usually just do a redirect to a signup page or to a pricing page or something similar. And then the 403 forbidden one, and that one's a bit more annoying because you may get that in certain situations where you're not expecting it. So if you're trying to access a resource, maybe on S3 or something, and you don't actually have the proper permissions, then you could get a 403 forbidden. It could be an improper access key or something similar. 
And another one that I don't use too often because I do try to make my routes pretty much clean and responding to actually what is in my controllers is the 405, which is the no method. Basically, if you have a request that you're making to the application, but that request doesn't actually have a endpoint or a controller that can listen on because you're making a post, but you only have get actions on that controller, then you could respond with a 405 no method but this one isn't really used too much. And 422 is a very important one because this is one that we use when the server has received the request and it was a good request. However, for one reason or another, it wasn't able to process that request. It could be because of a validation error or some other issue, but it wasn't able to save the record or fetch what it needed to because some other kind of semantic errors. And there's a lot more that you need to be aware of, like 429 for too many requests. And this is very useful on applications where you're serving an API to the end user and you want to throttle their requests just so that even good actors aren't acting in a bad way. So make sure that you read up on the 400 requests and really all of them because they can really help transform the way your application is experienced if you're using the proper requests. But then we get down to 418, which is really the purpose of this episode. So, as you can see, I have some tea. And this started back in 1994 as a joke, where the HTTP response of 418 means I'm a teapot and it cannot brew coffee. So that was the inspiration behind this episode of 418, but I also wanted to be informative of the different type of response codes. And then we get to the 500 series. And so if you've ever developed a Rails application, you've probably gotten the error undefined method for nil class, and that's going to respond with the error of 500. It's an internal server error, and there's some other different error 500 codes. And and these basically mean that there was something wrong on the server. The request may have been good and everything else may have been great, but due to a bug in the application or some other issue, then it wasn't able to really successfully respond or process that request. And Rails has a lot of nice helpers for us, and these helpers are really able to just make it more simple to understand as we're developing the code what status codes we're responding with. So instead of a 302 for see other, you could just have a colon see other, and then that's going to produce the exact same thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this special episode. Thanks for watching.